Aloha, welcome to Waikiki Beach and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're here coming to you uh, from the beautiful shores of, of Hawaii. With my wife Cindy is here with me, and uh, we had a beautiful time this morning. We walked down to the Moana, where we usually go, and we had our time of praying the morning liturgy, the hour together. And now we're ready to rock and roll because we have two guests, not one guest with us today. We have Deacon David Arms and his son Stephen Arms. We're going to talk about Milestones to Manhood, a rite of passage for Christian boys uh, being, welcoming into, being welcomed into the company of men. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to re remind you to go to deepadventure.com and you can, there you can join Bear's School of Manliness. We have 36 lessons on manliness that fathers can lead their sons through and men, uh, you can also join uh, the man cave and then we as, as adult men, we go through that, that process together over 36 months. So go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's School of Manliness. You know, I, I, I've sensed this need for a rite of passage for for a young man uh, for a, quite a long time. And I know with my own sons, we, I did that to some degree. Uh, with one of my sons, uh, Jeremiah, my oldest, it was, it was on the surfboard. I told him one day, because he used to play in the shore break, and I told him one day, one day I'm gonna be sitting out in the waves when it's a kind of a bigger day, and I'm gonna look to my left, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna st look to my side, and I'm gonna see you there. And, and it happened just that way, just at some point a few months later. I was out surfing and I looked over to my left side and there's my son Jeremiah looking up to me and said, hey dad. And in a sense that was us welcoming, him, welcoming this young boy into the company of men uh, out in the lineup. Uh, my son Shane, uh, his rite of passage was when I tested him for his ninja black belt in uh, Waikiki uh, Kapiolani Park. And then we said, okay, you pa and he did a great job. He passed his test with excellence. And I said, okay, let's go skydiving. So we went to the North Shore and t jumped out of an airplane uh, together. And then uh, that night he got a gnarly uh, Tahitian tattoo from Pueno, one of my good friends who also did the rocks tattoo. So that was, in a sense, his rite of passage. And then for Joshua, uh, he had tested for his ninja black belt at a young age. But really, I think his, his coming to age was when he and I uh, learned to fly planes together. I have a picture of my son Joshua right here when he was a little, little guy when we had our cabin in Montana. And he, he's holding in his hand a little Cessna 152, and he always was all about planes. So I knew that moment when he got his pilot license would be like his, his, his going from being a boy to being a man. But I didn't, um, I had the sense for it, but I really didn't have it uh, really figured out. And uh, so that it was actually a rite of passage, not into just him being a boy, boys to men, but actually to come into the company of other men. And so Deacon David Arms. Uh, and uh, his son Steve Arms are here to talk to us about their book Milestone to Manhood. When he when Steve emailed me a couple of weeks ago, I said, "Dude, send me that book right now." And I read it in one night. He's great, great read. So aloha, uh, Deacon, and aloha, Steve, to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, it's, well, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. I want to start with you. I want to start with you, Deacon. You know, my dad was a Catholic deacon. Oh, really? Yeah, he served in Minnesota and then uh, the island of Molokai where St. Damien is, and then in Maui, and actually in Phoenix, uh, as their life kind of brought them back to the mainland. Uh, but uh, you, you did, can you tell us the history of, of this, this, this book, not the book, but the rite of passage, and your experience of that? Yeah, hold on just a sec. I apologize. There's a squadron flying by right now. Well, we actually dig on it. It's cool. It's better <laughs> than dog barking. <laughs> it's cool. We just, so we just heard uh, F-16s flying by? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's cool. He's in. He's, he's near an airport. He could because he's a private pilot as well. Yeah. So tell us about your own personal story about the rite of passage. Yeah. So um, you know, a little bit of background. I grew up with uh, w without a father influence. Uh, my parents had separated when I was young. So um, when I got married, uh, you know, it was important to me that that we uh, didn't do that to our 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 kids. So um, I had. Um, had a really good relationship with my father-in-law, kind of saw him as a mentor. And mm, as my children were starting God. to grow up, um, 
you know, I came to him and said, hey, you know, I really want a plan where I can connect in a, in a deeper level with my boys. And he had this idea that, you know, well, traditionally, you know, in other cultures, they have like rites of passage for boys that are becoming men around the age of 13. So let's celebrate and have this rite of passage on their 13th birthday, where we actually take them away from home and uh, take them out to some place that they don't know. And there will be a lot of elements of surprise there. And we'll do certain rituals while we're there to impress on them, you know, what we want to do. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about private pilots and the destination for us, you know, as Catholic fathers is to raise strong, virtuous, faith-filled men. And as you know, Bear, you know, you take off and you have a certain destination you're headed to, but more than likely, you're going to get blown off track a little bit by prevailing winds or whatever. You may have a hail, headwind or a tailwind or a crosswind or a combination of those. And if you continue in that direction, you're going to end up somewhere, but it's not the destination that you planned. And if you're so in Hawaii, you, if you're in Hawaii, you're going to end up in the ocean. There you go. <laughs> you guys, it's really import, important to have a compass. Exactly. So it might not only be a problem, it might be treacherous. Mm -hmm. So we need not only a compass, but we need course correction. And that's what mm. this weekend is all about to kind of set the course and then allow our sons to know that on this journey, uh, you know, through the teenage years, through college, uh, they have resources, they have flight controls, if you will, to make those course corrections. They can reach out to their dad, they can reach out to their uncle, their grandfather, or a coach or whoever was involved in this rite of passage weekend. You know, here in Hawaii, uh, my, my wife is, just, you know, from Florida. And uh, when she, she moved here, she said, it's, Hawaii is so unique because there's a real tribe of men. There's a real community of men in Hawaii, um, and I think it's because of the water. We're all we're all watermen to some degree, whether we spearfish or sail or tandem surf or you know shortboard surf or boogie board or whatever. We're, there's this the water brings us the men together, and um, and she said and, and she just said it's really notice, noticeable that the men here. Are, are are a company of men and what happens here in hawaii uh, anyone younger than me calls me uncle and it's not just a, a a statement you know um so many young men on the beach in waikiki will come up to me and say uncle i had this problem i my you know i, I had i went to jail or uncle i had this problem i lost my job you know and so the uncles really do uncle i when i ran the world tour for tour for tandem surfing uh one young man acted out in a bad way out in the water and i and i had to ground him from from competing for a whole year. But a year later, I found him and I said, are you ready to go out again? And I uncled him, I disciplined him and I uncled him back into the, into the, into the lineup to surf again competitively. So the role of uncle is so substantial. You mentioned your, your, your stepfather. You know, there's this great song, we have it in our playlist in our, in our Bear School of Manliness. Uh, he's my boy. It's about a man who adopts a son. And he's so proud of this son. He says, he's my boy. And so uncles, especially I'm thinking of the women out there who aren't married. You know, there isn't a father that they can, that they trust, that they can have their son do this with. We, we uncles need to step forward and help uncle these younger men. And what, what's cool about your rite of passage is it was with you and, uh, and with the, uh, the company of other men. I'm going to switch to Stephen Arms, your, your son, Great. and uh, who I really, really dig on because uh, – uh, just very well spoken. And uh, so, Steve, aloha. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Barry. Thanks for having me. We got just a couple of minutes, but I wanted you to I wanted to ask you if you could kind of begin to talk story a bit about your your own experience. You you your father led you through this experience of the rite of passage. And I want to go through that whole weekend with you. I'd like to do that after the break, too. But can you kind of get the ball rolling on this? How old are you now, by the way? Sure. Yeah. Um, right now I'm 31 years old. Um, I'm happily married to my wife, Emily, and have two kids of our own. My ah. son, Joe, is one years old now, and my daughter, Claire, is three. Oh, that's so cool. What, what a beautiful n name. I think that, that name, Claire, for your daughter is just so beautiful. And so this is the oldest you've ever been, right? This is the oldest I've ever so, been. Sorry. I that's mean, right. hey, you're a dad. We got to do the dad jokes. You know, you got, can't, can't get away from it. Uh, so you were, you were, uh, you were, We've only got a minute here, so I just want to say you were a bit surprised when you when you said we're gonna have we're gonna have a weekend together. You didn't know what was going on, correct? Yeah, definitely. So the weekend started actually on Friday night when I was 12 years old, and my dad said, 
hey, how about for your birthday this year, we go out on a camping trip, just you and me, kind of have some guys time together. So that's really where the weekend started um, with an invitation from my dad. I had no idea what I was in for, um, but th that weekend really turned into something that was uh, life changing for me. And when um, we get back, we're gonna we're gonna talk story about that because I know it ended up not just being with your dad, but both a couple of uncles or close friends, and it was, it was it it's the it's so cool. I, I that's why I got you on the show right away. We've been talking with Deacon David Arms and Stephen Arms. They're both from the Bay Area of San Francisco. I was raised in Santa Cruz, so and all my Ohana is up in the Bay Area up there. And we're going to talk more about The Rite of Passage, the book that they've written, Milestone to Manhood. And Steve, where can they find you? So we're at uh, www.milestonetomanhood.com. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bootstraps. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Kind of an odd saying, if you know what I mean. How is anyone supposed to pull on their bootstraps to get themselves up off the ground? That just don't work. Of course, it's one of them hyperboles that is exaggerating of the truth to make a point. It means to get on with fixing your own bad situation by gutting it out and making do on your own. Well, there are plenty of wimps that need to quit whining, quit using others, and learn to pull harder on their own bootstraps. No doubt about that. Seems to me more folks today need a stint in the Marine Corps or Peace Corps or a long season of long days on a fish tender. But even a hard-bitten cowboy knows no matter how resourceful and tough he is, some things just can't be done without getting some help. Got a serious trigger puller army veteran friend who goes by Xavier. Old X is as busted up in more places in his body than ten other wounded warriors combined. X is as tough as they come, yet his pride doesn't get in his way to ask for help when he's needing it. Some things his body will just not let him do no longer. The Apostle Paul was as tough an old codger as they come, went through boo-coo tight spots more than any other man I've read about. Yet, he clearly recognized his need for the Lord's help many a time and asked for the same of others now and then. Suggest we all get toughened up like Paul, but not so much that we are foolish to think we can always get it done on our own. Meanwhile, grab your bootstraps and pull. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, go. you can click on the store button. By the way, we have a lot of real cool stuff there, real cool T-shirts and gear for, for men and women, by the way. Uh, but we have uh, two of my books, uh, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which Sophia just republished. It was a bestseller back when it first came out. And then a, and then a, a deep, deep, deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and I want to mention something because we have Deacon David here along with his son, Stephen, Stephen Arms. My dad was a, was a deacon. He was also a, a, a prolific speaker. He spoke around the world. Uh, but he had a, a book that he, he wrote called To Climb the Highest Mountain. It'd be a great book for, it's just a little, little book. 
It'd be a great book for uh, men to read with their sons because it's all about setting a course for your life. And in there, there's also a short uh, thing that my mother wrote. When you're a deacon, your wife is definitely part of the ministry too. And she uh, wrote, she called me one day and she said, the Lord had me write something down. And it's, a, it's just about, it's a letter that she wrote to her grandchildren that she wanted them to read every birthday. And that's only, it was probably about 16 pages. And it's, it was her counsel on life. And uh, within a few months, she had a, a stroke that left her speechless for 22 years. And so it was so beautiful that the Holy Spirit prompted her to write this book. And that's those two things are both included in uh, To Climb the Highest Mountain. And that book of my father's is available on our website at deepadventure.com. So we have with, with us today Deacon Arms, Deacon David Arms uh, from the San Francisco area, one of our greatest uh, is it Archbishop Cor- Cortellone that's there? Is that is it, he's Archbishop, Archbishop right? Archbishop Cortellone, yes. Oh, we love that guy, yeah, and absolutely. his son Stephen Arms. So Stephen, tell us now about this weekend. Just just don't 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 just hit the high points. Tell us about you know your feeling while you were driving in that car, and 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 and, and you know let us really know what it was like from your perspective. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, the weekend started on a Friday night. Uh, my dad invited me to go on a camping trip with him, uh, just the two of us. And admittedly, you know, as a 12 year old boy hanging out with his dad, I wasn't too excited about the idea of spending an entire weekend alone with my dad. But, um, I think that just comes with the territory of being 12 years old. No game boys Um, allowed. No game boys allowed. No, this was going to be just quality time with dad and me. Talk about roughing it. Holy mackerel. So Saturday morning, we wake up, we get in the car and we start driving. Um, We pull over for for breakfast at a at a restaurant. And when the waitress sits us down at a booth sitting right next to us is my grandfather and my two uncles, Uncle Kirk and Uncle Dan. And I was totally surprised to see them. I I couldn't figure out why they were there, Um, but Eventually they told me, you know, this weekend actually isn't going to be just you and your dad, but it's going to be all the men of the family. And we've organized a special uh, weekend for you called your rite of passage. And at the end of this weekend, you are going to be considered to be a man of this family as well. So for me, I was totally surprised. I had no idea this was coming, but the idea of becoming a man of the family really intrigued me and it excited me. Um, and I thought it was really special that all the other men in the family were going to be there too. My now, uncles who, who, and my grandfather. Who, who said that to you? One of the uncles? Um, it was my, my grandfather who kind of gave me the, the rundown of what this weekend was actually going it, to be it's about. It's so important. I want you to hear this, men. There is a saying someone said, uh, that a young boy who is not affirmed by other men other than his dad has a hole in his heart and it fills with demons. So as uh, I make it a point all through the day to affirm men, it, 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 even 50-year-old men, I'll say, I'm proud of you. When I see them with a family or I see them out, out and about and I see them being diligent in the work, I'll just say, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I say that all throughout the day. And I realize it's, we need to, men need to be affirmed. Even a 50-year-old man has a boy inside of him needs to be affirmed. And so it's so cool that it wasn't your dad. It was in the company of men and it was your grandfather that said this. So, so go ahead and continue. Yeah, so we continued from the the restaurant for breakfast up to uh, Lake Shasta, which is a few hours outside of the Bay Area. And the first kind of ritual to get the weekend started off was an entrance ceremony. Well, wait a minute. Where did you sit in the car? So uh, on the drive up, my dad said that I would be riding shotgun seat, which was really special as a 12-year-old kid because... You know, normally when there's adults in the car, the kids are always sent to the back, you know, in the third row. In the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was I was the smallest guy there for sure. But my dad said, no, you need to sit in the in the shotgun seat because this is your rite of passage weekend. So that little thing was, was so cool. So cool. Yeah. So he, they had a lot of small details like that that really helped. It really lifted me up during the weekend and and made this special for me, you know. Uh, elevated my status from no longer being a boy, but being a man now. So we get to Lake Shasta. My dad had rented a cabin there for us to stay at. And 
before we entered the cabin, we did an entrance ceremony. So it started with a prayer. Um, my dad read a reading out of the book of Exodus, which is um, the scene where Moses encounters God in the form of a burning bush. And uh, after the entrance ceremony, we go into the cabin and there's a couple things there. So for one, we remove our shoes. So in the Bible passage, Moses takes off his sandals when he's in God's presence in the form of the burning bush. Well, in the same way, this cabin was going to be our sacred space for the weekend. So we took off our shoes as a sign um, of reverence and respect uh, for the weekend and for, for God's presence. Um, and then secondly, uh, once we entered the cabin after this entrance ceremony, there was not going to be any leaving the cabin. So we weren't going to go out on fishing trips or on long walk walks on the beach. We were there for my rite of passage weekend. And they told me straight up, you're going to enter this cabin as a boy and you will leave this cabin as a man. That's beautiful. We're talking with Steve Arms and his father, Deacon Arms, uh, who have written a book, Milestone to Manhood. Where can people find this book? You can find it on our website at uh, milestonetomanhood.com. Is it available on Amazon as well? Uh, yeah, so we have this book published on Amazon. You can just search it uh, in, in your Amazon search bar and our book will come up. We'd love to see people contact you at your website and uh, buy it there too, uh, because we'd love to have you guys invite them to come out and talk story if you have a men's conference or Knights of Columbus or or for anything. I think women need to hear about this too. Uh, I've sent your sent your information to Women of Grace. I think it's really important. It's a lot for single women and uh, to to understand this too, who are single moms. Okay, so so uh, continue uh, continue with your story then about uh, that weekend. Okay, so we enter the cabin, and the first thing that we do is we light a fire. So um, for one, the cabin was cold, you know, and we needed heat. The the fire, the the wood stove was the only source of heat in the cabin. Um, but more importantly, the fire throughout the weekend was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So just like Moses was uh, encountering God in the form of a burning bush, we were going to have that element of God's presence symbolized through this fire in the wood stove. So we lit the fire. And well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was, who, who, set, who, who set the fire wood in place? That's, that's a sketchy thing. Did a 13-year-old boy do that or was it the other men? The firewood came with the cabin. So, so it was already set in it place. It was already there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we lit the fire. Um, and one of the things was, is once the fire is lit, we don't let it go out um, mm. until the weekend is over. And the symbolism there is, you know, the life, a life of faith. Sometimes you'll be burning hot and other times um, you'll be colder in your faith life. But the, the most important thing is to never let that, that fire or that candle be extinguished, right? And we're so we're talking with Steve Arms and his dad, Deacon David Arms. They've written a book called Milestone to Manhood about this rite of passage that I'm going to encourage. We're actually going to add a link to it in our Bear School of Manliness, and I'll write up something about how, if you want to have a rite of passage with with your son. You know, this thing about keeping the fire going, and it's the way it's being handed down from uh, uncles and fathers to son, uncles and fathers to son. It's a, it's tradition, and it's tradition with a capital T. I heard it said, I wish I could give the person credit for the quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but the quote is basically that tradition is not ashes. Tradition is the preservation of fire. It's keeping the embers going. And one of the, one of the things you would do in those days uh, is you would, in, in, the, in the Wild West days too, you would carry, in, you, you had a special pouch where you would carry an ember so you could more easily start a fire wherever you went. So keeping this fire going within your family, within your tribe, handing it on from grandfather to, to son, from uncle to, to young man, and and calling him forth to become part of the company of men is so important. Uh, they can find you at what website again? That's milestonetomanhood.com. We're talking with Deacon David Arms and his son Stephen Arms. We're going to come back and hear a little bit more about what that rite of passage was for you, Stephen. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. You know, one of my 
favorite things to do in the islands is to outrig a canoe. I have a one-man super light carbon fiber canoe that I can paddle for miles or I can take out and surf beautiful waves. But what people really like to do here is paddle together maybe eight people in a canoe and all paddle together and drop in on a wave. And I remember about a half a year ago, Cindy and I were here in Waikiki Beach and none of the canoe captains were going out. It was just way too big. You could hardly get outside the reef. But my friend Pat said, I'll take you out there if you want to go. So Cindy sat number one in the canoe and I got in the back and a few Aussies got in the middle and we paddled out and through some kind of miracle, we made it out through the reef. We paddled out an eighth of a mile, a quarter of a mile. We had to go a full half mile out, out to the place that they call First Point and beyond. And we waited and we waited for the big cleanup set to come. And we didn't have to wait too long. Here it came, a 20 foot plus wave. Paddle, ho ole, with all your might, everyone in the canoe. Paddle, paddle, paddle with all our might. And we missed the wave. Now we're in a treacherous place. We're in the impact zone. The bigger wave is coming. Ho ole! Paddle hard, paddle hard, paddle hard. And we dropped in. Cindy was number one in the canoe. The water spraying past her. She looked down the line. The wave is bigger than the 24 foot canoe. We're shooting down the line, going to the right. We turn left across the reef. I have to climb out on the outrigger to keep it from flipping over and we straightened out again and then went straight. But how do we do that? ho o o le -i. We all paddled together hard. This is why being a part of the church is so important. Jump into the bark of Peter, the boat of Peter. The French call outriggers piros and paddle hard. Pad to, paddle together with one a purpose according to pursuing the magisterium and the teachings of the church. Ho -o -o -le -i. This is Bear Wasna coming to you from Waikiki Beach. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, a Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, isn't God good? Uh, there's hope, everyone. There's hope, and especially I, I feel like so compelled to speak to the to our mama bears out there. There's hope. Um, if you have a son in your home and there's a man who's betrayed your family and isn't a part of that home, look for an uncle, uh, a Christian man, uh, or maybe a couple of uncles, and 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 you need to have these young bo this young boy be part of that company of men. Pray in that St. Monica type prayer and God will God, God will bring that person and men I'm challenging you when you see a young boy who's, who's, uh, whose father's abandoned him um, and, and if it's, a, if it's, a, it's a, an avenue where you can serve be there for that young man and you know if you're working on the car have him come over and work on the car you know if you're doing a repair thing if you're going to watch a football game if you're going to go hunting uh, we really need our uncles to step up the number one problem in America right now is not is not uh, transgenderism. It isn't. Uh, it isn't abortion. It's not. Um, it, it's none of those things. The number one problem in America right now is men. If men would take the kuleana, their responsibility, seriously, it, it, it would transform America. It, it, women get abortions because there's a, a boy there who impregnated her, and there isn't a strong man that will stand with her. There's not a strong man that will stand beside her, whether it's the, the father of that child or her own father or another strong man. You know, I love reading my Louis L'Amour Westerns. And my next book, 12 Rules of Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, kind of has a, a Louis L'Amour type theme to it, as does our website, by the way, has that Western theme. In his, in his books, 
there were always strong women. He, he's the first author, really, to really, to really characterize the woman in the story as being strong. Uh, they were strong, but that doesn't mean that they didn't find themselves in vulnerable positions. A woman who finds herself, for example, pregnant, she may be a very strong woman, but she needs a strong man to stand with her. So, man, we're just challenging you to stand up, and we're also encouraging you through this, this conversation today with Deacon David Arms and Stephen Arms uh, to, to find a way to, to help these boys know that they're becoming a man. Um, the, the, what, what a boy is is someone who seeks pleasure. What a man is is someone who seeks responsibility. You don't, be, you don't, you don't, a boy just doesn't grow up to be a man. He has to become a man. And uh, love is willing the true good for the other, as Aquinas said. And St. John Paul II said um, it's self-donation. And his first book was Love and Responsibility. His first play that he wrote, I believe, was along that lines, too. So we need to invest ourselves as men in taking on our kuleana, our stewardship, our responsibility. And when you do that, man, it's going to make you feel right. It's going to make you feel just so solid and so right that you're doing the right thing, that you're serving others. So um, will you please continue with us, Steve, about, about this, this, this rite of passage weekend that we're talking about, Stephen Arms? Sure. So at this point, we've entered the cabin, we've lit the fire, and the next sort of ritual for the weekend was a discussion of what it means to be a man. So each of the men present, my dad and my grandfather and my two uncles, they each shared for maybe 10 or 15 minutes on uh, what it means to be a man today or how to be a good man. And some of the advice that I was given was um, definitely to respect women at all times. Mm. You know, um, a good man is not uh, addicted to pornography or doesn't use women as an object for his pleasure. Um, but instead, a good man serves women um, in the appropriate way. Um, other advice that I got was, you know, to treat everybody as if they were my brother or sister mm. in Christ, you know, mm -hmm. um, to treat everybody with respect, even if you don't necessarily agree with them. Um, some advice that I got was becoming more independent, you know, um, mm. my parents, now that I was becoming a man, they weren't going to do as much for me, you know, and I kind of needed to step up and uh, take on more responsibility myself. So those were all sorts of uh, bits and pieces of advice that they gave me. And they always tried to tie it in with a story. You know, my grandfather would talk about what it was like being a police officer. Um, my dad would talk about well, what it let, was like. Let, let me ask your dad. Yeah. Okay. Deacon David, what, what counsel did you uh, give to your son? Or let's put it this way. What counsel would you give to men, let's say, between the age of 13 and 24 right now that are, that are um, in this, this transitional phase, some, some later than others? What counsel would you have for these men? And, and, and if you're listening to the show, get your kid right now to come to the radio or watch it on, on YouTube or wherever, what podcast you're listening to. And uh, listen, listen to what Deacon David has to say. Yeah. Well, as it says in scriptures, you know, bad company co corrupts good morals. And so that's probably the number one uh, thing that I would, I would warn or advise is to, you know, watch who your friends are. You're going to become who you hang around. And um, you, you want to be with, you know, guys that are going to lead you on the right trajectory. What else would you say? say? Um, you know, just kind of like the advice that we gave Steve, you know, I mean, you know, women are precious and, uh, you know, we love them in a certain way. We don't use them. We, we respect them. And, um, you know, just, just looking back at, you know, how, what a dad Steve is today and how he treats his wife. It's just, you know, it, it's amazing. So. Yeah. And, and did you, did Steve ever come back to you for counsel? or to the other men as, as he was moving into manhood? He did. Actually, there was a, a stretch during his stay in college when he um, he was interested in a girl that had, actually her dad was a Protestant pastor. And um, so he, he was torn. You know, he liked this girl, but he, he, he identified as Catholic. But so he had a lot of questions for us, and we were able to answer some of them. And some of them we weren't. But 
fortunately, where he went to college, they had a really good Newman Center. So we advised him to, you know, talk to the priest of the Newman Center. And it really, um, really helped him navigate through that. And then, you know, cut subsequently speaking with those priests, you know, they were like, hey, your son is priest material, man. You know, so right. I knew that either way, you know, if he's going to be a good priest, it means he's going to be a good dad. If he would have been a good dad, he would be a good priest. So, yeah, so as he was on that journey of discernment, that that time of transition is so challenging. You know, it's it's uh, when you when you're paddling when you're paddling a, a canoe uh, when you you know there's there's that time there's that moment of transition from one side of the canoe to the other. Uh, when when the children of Israel were crossing the Jordan River, you know, uh, at the Red Sea for that matter too, at flood stage, it's the times of transition when the enemy tries to pick people off. And he especially tries to pick off the stragglers. The Amalekites were famous for that. They'd hang around and they'd pick off the people that were straggling behind as they were wandering in the wilderness. And so during this time of transition from boyhood to manhood, um, from being mama's boy really to being the father's son, uh, there needs to be, you need to, you need to uh, actually uh, initiate that relationship with your son. For me and my sons, um, you know, they're everyone. Each of them is so unique, uh, but I just kind of did what I wanted, what I did, and 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 uh, encouraged them to go with me. Uh, we did a lot of night hiking. You know, um, I don't know how often, uh, probably not once. I would go out almost every night into the mountains and hike. But um, but to bring my sons with me when I night hiked, it was a really cool thing because they went places that uh, that um, you know, we get up on the top of a mountain. I'd say, you know, there's th- hundreds of thousands of people below us. But none of them are seeing this view. None, none of them are seeing the stars like we're seeing tonight uh, because we've stepped outside of the box. And the other thing is I did is, is I saw each of my sons. We're speaking just about sons here, by the way. As I saw each of my sons, uh, I, I would discern in them what is the way that they should go. What is their natural um, bend in their life? Who are they as a person? Like my son Shane, uh, when he was young, he cost me a hundred dollars a week of, of repairing things, and not that he was destructive on purpose, but he was just like kind of like me, I guess, a bull in china closet. But uh, and so one day he said, "Hey, Dad, can I borrow your camera?" And I, my, your, my new video camera, I just bought because my oldest son had destroyed the last one, filming skateboarding videos. And I go, "No," but then it was like the Holy Spirit grabbed me and twisted me around. I mean, it was such a powerful moment in my life that I said, "Here, Shane." I'm not loaning it to you. I'm giving it to you. And that became his whole life. And he cradled that camera like it was an infant child. And so part of being a father is to see your children's natural inclinations, their gifts and their callings, and to encourage them you know, along that way and open those doors. But all you can do is open the doors. It's their job to walk through. And we're talking with Deacon David Arms and his son Stephen Arms. We're talking about the rite of passage. Uh, David, where can they find you guys? What's your website? We're at www.milestonetomanhood.com. If you want to have uh, Deacon David or his son come and speak to your men's conference or, or to any events, go to that website. I, I have a funny feeling these guys are going to be on the road a lot because I think their message is so powerful and so needed. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, because we have three years of me standing by an ocean someplace and, and teaching from the catechism. We go all the way from the beginning of the catechism all the way through, and it's just kind of a nice way to, to go through the catechism. We have all of our Bear Wozniak adventures there. Uh, our most popular, our second most popular video we have on my website is me surfing with an Olympic champion pole vaulter, tandem surfing. <laughs> and uh, so we have all tandem surfing there. We have lifestyle things there. We have so many great things. And, uh, and we have our radio show there, too. But if you go there, subscribe, uh, because uh, um, then, you, then you're notified as soon as we post something new. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. 
We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have with us today Deacon David Arms from the San Francisco diocese as along with his son Stephen arms and we're talking about their book milestone to manhood and uh the rite of passage it, it, the subtitle is a christian rite of passage to help your 13 year old son make the leap from boyhood to manhood and that's what it is uh you know uh it, it's a leap you know faith rests and then faith leaps and uh, if you're not if, you, if you're not leaping uh you're not actually living a life of faith because god has a god has a uh a uh, powerful mission for you. If you're, uh, that's why we have the gift of prudence because uh, you need to be prudent if you're going to follow God's will. But if you follow God's will, you get to hang out where God's doing stuff. You know, our our creed here is that the most advent- most adventurous, que- the most radical quest you can have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will, and that takes boldness and it takes prudence. Uh, our our guest today. Deacon David Arms is a private pilot, and you know pi- private pilots do really bold things. They're flying this heavy piece of metal all over the place, but before you get in that plane, you go through a pre-flight checklist. You go through a, 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 a pre-flight planning phase as well, and that's what prudence is. But prudence is, isn't there for those people who want to sit on a couch. Prudence is uh, there for people who want to be bold, and if you're a Christian, God's calling you to be bold. And so uh, one of the, the things that David and, and, and his son Stephen have done is this book, Milestone to Manhood, was a real bold thing, and I hope that it really goes, this message really carries far. Steve, you were call, telling us about how at one point on, the, on this weekend, this rite of passage, uh, the men began to give you some counsel. Uh, can you continue with your story about that weekend? Sure, yeah. So um, they gave me the what it, may, what it means to be a man talk. Um, after that, comes a scripture sharing exercise. So each of the men picked out their favorite script uh, passage in the Bible, um, shared it with the group, and then kind of gave a little Bible study on why they picked that passage and what it means to them and how that can be applied to my own life. Um, My grandfather would always pick the Uh, story of the prodigal son, you know, there's beautiful imagery of the relationship between father and son there. So it was really well suited for a rite of passage weekend. Um, After the scripture sharing exercise, that really concluded the first day of the rite of passage. Um, That's a lot, you know, I had no idea this was coming. So by the end of the first night, I was just totally wiped, you know, Uh, I couldn't take any more in. But before we went to bed, one thing that my dad did is he presented me with a manila envelope full of letters. So these were letters that uh, other adults had written to me. So all the men there, but also my aunts, uh, my grandmother, my mom, uh, my scoutmaster at the time, they all wrote me letters uh, as I was making this transition from boyhood to manhood with advice in it. You know. Um, I had just sat through some sharing exercises and some advice about what it means to be a man, but these letters were something that I could take and hold with me forever. You know, I still have the letters today. Um, Some people who wrote the letters, like one of my grandmothers and my grandfather, they've since passed on since then. Um, So I can't talk to them anymore, but I can read their letters. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, it feels so good to, read those letters and have those bring those memories back of what those people meant to me. So those letters have been really special to me. That, that was a really special gift from that weekend. And, and, um, you know, we have, we're, we're running short of time. It's our last segment, but, uh, we have about five minutes. Can you tell us th- the rest of the weekend then? And, and, and Lord, we pray that this message would go out. We pray for those, uh, the, the families out there that this would just really hit their hearts and have an impact and ask that it would be just make this a, such a blessing for the young boys that are becoming men. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what. So that kind of concluded the first day of the rite of passage. Um, if you want to hear the rest of the story, 
you can <laughs> you can buy our book. Um, well, how does it end? How does it end? Is there a certain r ritual at the end or anything? So at the end, it it, it ends with a blessing. So all the men um, at the end of the weekend blessed me, and they essentially told me, "Okay, the, your rite of passage weekend is over, and you are now considered to be a man of this family, just like us." Um, and so I will say, you know, in hindsight, um, how that affected me is that it gave me a very clear understanding of my place in the world as I was a teenager. Um, granted, I did a lot of stupid things as a teenager. I made my fair share of mistakes, um, but I never questioned the fact that I was a man. You know, um, I had as I got into my 20s and made other friends, um, one of my friends who was engaged in getting married, he asked me one time, he's like, Steve, when is the first time that you considered yourself to be a man? And I was like, well, when I was 13, my dad and my uncles basically told me straight up, you're a man now, you know? So for me, it was crystal clear growing up that I was a man and I was expected to behave like one. Mm. Um, it wasn't until I met my friend and had that conversation with him that I realized that, uh, you know, not a lot of families do this type of things for their sons. And a lot of men really question their manhood simply because no one has ever told them that they're a man before. That's so powerful. I was, uh, you know, I, I'm going back to my Louis L'Amour Westerns. I love his books. I was actually listening to one on Audible the other day. And the, the man is speaking to a woman that he's interested in. But who's telling him, you know, don't don't do this dangerous thing? And he says, um, "I'm not here to be judged by women. I'm here to I, I I have to live up to the standards of other men." What a powerful statement! And I, when I was young, uh, Steve, there was there was an expectation put on 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 boys and other men. There was there was an, there was a way that men were supposed to behave. Not that all did, but now it just seems the opposite. Uh, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas said that the definition of an effeminate man is someone who just seeks pleasure. And we're seeing that. So many, I, I hate to call them men, but males out there just remain boys. Pornography is, is on an all-out attack, and men have to learn to fight that and win that battle. Um, that, that, because all that does is it, 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 you're, you're, you're seeking pleasure with no kuleana. Or you're, or you're um, having a relationship with a woman outside of marriage. You know, I, I, I mean... I was on my wedding night. I was a virgin. I mean, I I don't ever hear people talk like that, but men men uh, men need to meet need to uh, to take kuleana and 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 be responsible and 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 have a quest to stand up to to make a stand and live by certain standards. And I know my dad always told me whenever um, I would have a new job, he would say, write down a philosophy of how you're going to work that job. What's your what's your number one goal? What's your number two goal? And my number one goal was always to help my boss be successful. But how about in your own life? What are your standards? And so men out there, young men, take a journal, go out to a, it needs to be someplace in the wild. Maybe it's an edge of a cliff or edge of the ocean or something, but you need to go someplace and write a letter to God and write a letter to yourself and say, this is, this is, how, this is how I intend to, to live my life. These are the standards I tend to live by. If you want to know a great place to get to, to know those standards, my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, goes through you know all seven of the virtues but we really need you men we really need men to to be virtuous to become heroic and to fulfill your mission it, when when you fulfill your purpose you feel so great and your purpose as a man is to be a hero it's to lay down your life in service to others i'm going to leave De uh, deacon david uh, if you can give us your the last couple last minute or so here of your words of counsel and, and your thoughts sure thanks mayor so um, again, you know, we just felt like it was important to impart on our our sons the uh, the virtues, you know. And uh, incidentally, we also did do this for the the, the girls of the family. Um, my wife and and sisters in law would do this when the girls turned thirteen. But because we never were in that uh, process, we didn't. Our book is totally focused on men. So. And and have you do you, do you have you participated in doing this with other men? I mean, have you have you have you helped being have you been one of the uncles in other situations? Yes, we've uh, done it for nephews also. Yeah, and then we've also kind of counseled people that have done it 
um, even before the book was published, we would email them the notes and say, this is how you would. Okay, so I, okay, I just want to talk about this. In your book, uh, Milestone to Manhood, which you can get on Amazon or their website, milestonetomanhood.com, uh, there's actually like a little appendix that says, here's here's the plan for a weekend. Of course, you can adapt it as you are, but it says, here's, here's one, two, three, four. So it actually goes through that process. We're talking, if you actually yeah, go, yeah, go sorry, ahead. If you go to the website, one thing you can get for free is just there are email letters. Just cut and paste, fill the name in, send this email out one year before your son's birthday. Send this one out six months before. And in the meantime, do this, this, and this to set it up. Send this one out three months, one week. So it's like everything's there. Turnkey situation. Turnkey situation. We've been exactly. talking with David Arms, Deacon David Arms. Thank you for being a deacon. You're so welcome. It's so my, beautiful. It's an honor. I, I just was ordained less than two months ago. So, well, well, what an honor to be with you. It just, it's, you know, deacons get to hang around a certain place in heaven that I don't get to go to. You know, there, it mentions deacons and 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 others. So, I mean, it, it really it is anointing. It is a, is a it is a, it is a calling. But all of us men are called to be fathers and to be uncles. A priest is called to be a father, right? He has his, he has his flock. We're all called to be uncles and to be fathers. So, be on the lookout how you can affirm other men even a man who's 50 years old needs to be affirmed as a man and, and and look for good things that other men do and affirm them and if you want to find out more go to milestone to manhood and i'm doing this just trying to get the word out i'd love to see you guys out speaking to conferences all over the country all over the all over the world and begin to share this you've been listening to bear wasnick the, the the bear wasnick adventure we our guests are stephen arms and deacon david arms their book is milestone to manhood I, I want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We've put so much effort into our School of Manliness, and we'd love for you to participate in the Man Cave and participate in the curriculum with us. It's 36 lessons. Uh, 30, go, it's a three-year curriculum, and then you can also use this. Uh, we can give your sons their own username and password. They can't be part of our Man Cave, but the younger sons, but they can participate with you, and you can go through the whole curriculum with them, father and son, uh, on the journey towards manhood. Until next week. By the way, I get to go have breakfast with uh, one of the members of our man cave. He's here in Hawaii right now. We're about to go have breakfast with Tony and his wife. So until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books. And since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too. Plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.